Yeah. Ja, Rastafari. It's from a good time ago, you know. We realize, say, uh, you see the phone, and we're plugging your ears from the phone to your ears. Come like an appliance socket where your ears is the socket, and that little ear plug you plug into your ears is the the try the try the try the try prong thing that you put push into the electrical socket on the wall. So I look on it now, I look on it as a we a Babylon use for engrain the mark of the beast, the 666. Give you the 666 mentality, the mentality of the mark of the beast. You understand me? So because that's what the, the aim of the, the media is. Is to push with you because they are underneath the the umbrella of the Luciferian agenda. You know, they might have the Luciferian agenda. So they are here to actually put us into that frame of mind, into that mode of thinking, which is like an NK ultra control, you know, mind control. You say what they want you to say and how you should say it. So they even make your vocabulary for you. So you don't know, say so the real mark of the beast or the one we're coming shortly right now, which is the, you know, the chip, which is going to work with the satellites. This Elon Musk sent out his um, shuttle the other day recently, the shuttle, and they call it the, the dragon. That capsule that takes back the uh, took back the astronauts that land into the, the the Gulf of Mexico, those guys from NASA, you know, these guys they travel in a boat in a, in, a, in, a, in a capsule called the Dragon. Now we are in the time of the Dragon, as in you know from the time of Revelation chapter 30, where the Dragon gave its power and seat of authority unto the beast. You know how our world, Three things, you know, four things the Bible talks about. Talks about because God gave this um, prophecies of the end of times to Jesus Christ, who is they call him in the Bible according to it, his begotten Son. But we call him Emmanuel. You understand me? He gave this to John. He gave it to an angel or one of his servants to give to his servant angel to give to his servant John to show the world what must take place in the ending of times. The four main subjects that he spoke of is the land of the tribe of Judah, which is the man who will open the seven seals. He'll be the king of kings and the lords of lords. He talks about the dragon, who's that one who was expelled from heaven, Lucifer the light bearer. He was the greatest musician. He was very close to the Almighty. All right, he was expelled by Michael, as in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. He's the dragon, then the beast, who is run by the shape shifting reptilians that shape shifts to lizards, run a thing called the Sunday worshiping world, which was put together by the papacy, but mainly through the Western Roman Empire emperors and leaders of that society and dispensation, see? All right, so they make Sunday worshiping. We worship the sun on Sunday. We worship on the first day of the week, despising God's law, which is from Genesis chapter 2, when God says he's sanctified, bless the seventh day, can finish all his works, which was in creating everything including man. All right, so him saying bless and him sanctify that day. See, if we understand the meaning of these words. When he says sanctify, sanctify means something that you should not violate. Yeah. It means you know, if you go against, you know, if you jump over the wall, you must broke down the barriers. You must hold steadfast to the teachings and to the demands of the Creator who blessed and sanctified such day. Then, short long after, you know, because the aim of the game is to take as much people off what God has directed to us, which is, must uphold the seventh day. This was long before 
Noah, long before the flood, long before Abraham, long before the Jews. So none of them come with no law for us. This is a, a God-given law, which is the seventh-day law, the law of the seventh day. We should rest upon the seventh day. Serve John. Give him all the glory. Rest upon the seventh day. See? All right, so them boys are coming about, you know, after Christ, long after Christ, and then reset. You see me? And after Christ, the man them change it from the seventh day to the first day. Although Babylon they done do them thing long time. You don't need the lunar calendar worshiping the moon. So therefore now, after them boy have finished fix that up until about the from 221 AD it becomes proper, but it was developed from the time of um, Emperor Caesar, Judas Caesar, to Augustus Caesar, comes straight up to um Hadrian. When he, yes, General, when he, in 138 AD, them times, he kicked away the seventh-day recognition of God, or the seventh-day demands of God. We call it Judaism. Now, Judaism, you know, Judaism. That means you're upholding the seventh-day law, giving God praises and magnifying. Rest and you don't know upon the seventh day. So now, after that, now, to take away more people from off this, the, 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 the seventh day, because that is Lucifer's purpose, you know, to get as much people away from God. So he devise this Christianity thing, this sun-worshipping solar calendar thing, and having all these people, two point, maybe two, two point eight billion people, 2.5, 2.6, worshipping on the first day, which is not what God recommended or what God gave and ratified and sanctified for us to follow. So them took away a portion. Then now they did they are not satisfied Lucifer. So he developed the Muslim world through the false prophet Muhammad. Because that's one of the next man the Bible talks about now. That is the bee is the land of the tribe of Judah, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So the false prophet is Muhammad who has caused people to worship on the sixth day, which is Friday, not the seventh day, bowing to a stone, telling lies that this stone came from paradise and that Gabriel took the stone to Mohammed. Some, uh, some other narrative says, our literature, it says, somebody went up on um, Abu Kubay mountain, Saudi Arabia, in the Quarish region, and found Three, uh, two or three stones on the top of Abu Kibbeh's mountain. Nobody saw who put the stone there. Saw who put the stone there. So therefore, it's just conjecture. All these things are made up of, which was only a set up by Lucifer to take away more people from off the seventh day. So Bam Muhammad now built this, this religion called Islam, having people bow into a stone, which is idolatry. Because, you know, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1 says, you must not set up any form of idols in your land. You must make an image of stone in your land and bow down unto it. Because it is a, it's a, it's an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So read it. You see me? You can't worship another day. You can't bow to no form of idols. And that's what they have done now. With this black stone, which is in the, the Kaaba, in Mecca, which they are saying, that's with Abraham built Kaaba. Abraham built which Kaaba? Stop chat bullshit over here. See here? All right. So, Muhammad, so these guys come and take away another... 1.8 billion to 2 billion people, 2.8 billion people of the Sabbath. So out of the 7.8 billion, 4.8 4 billion had gone to the two, two, gone off God's law, going underneath the umbrella of man's law from off the Sabbath, which is about 4.8 billion people. You see me? Now, you know, say we are the land of the tribe of Judah. Because we are all with King Celestia. You understand me? King Celestia. The one is the last land of the tribe of Judah, physically now, upon the face of the earth. Because, you see, you see, if you recognize Christ in these times, you have to recognize Christ by his titles. You can't recognize Christ by no man coming to tell you that here goes Christ, or that man is Christ, or such is Christ. Now, you have to have intelligence to read what is in the Bible, do your researches, and, and can apply it, do the, do the, solve the, the puzzle, you know. So I have a little problem that is there to find out who is the land of the tribe of Judah, what is the land of the tribe of Judah, where is this title coming from, who is the first land of the tribe of Judah in real life. Now as we know, 
Everything is Abrahamic. It only comes really to nowadays. But Abraham come from Shem. Shem come from Noah. Noah come from way back then. All right, terror, all them guys. All right. So, the man there make, 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 Islam. No, sorry. The land of the tribe of Judah is the one that God uses to teach the world and that Christ land where Christ is coming through to maybe when Christ first Christ come and I talk about no image of the beast that white painting of Jesus Christ now. but I talk about the real Christ who went upon the cross and shed his blood for I and I that he, he can see all the imprint in a king slash his hands alright so the land of Judah is coming through the land of Shem through Noah coming down so till it reach Jacob Jacob have 12 sons one of them named Judah and one of them named Levi. You see, Judah the man who born July, the fourth son of Jacob. So out of that man, out of that line of man, you shall get the lion of that tribe of man called Judah. So who are going to be the lion? So you know, so Saul was the first king of Israel. And Saul had problems with the Philistines who were represented by the main warrior who was Goliath. You know, David went there. You know the story. David was in the hills looking after the sheep. You know, the man there fight bears, lions. He went to home, his mother said, take the food of his and has brothers like Jonathan and them guys who was fighting the war with Saul against and defending Israel. So therefore, when David came to mommy, mommy said, take this your lunch for your brothers on the battlefield, the front line. When there he saw everybody quivering, all of the all of the, the house of Israel, you know, quivering. He saw King Saul in a very you know, reluctant state. We don't want to fight no battle, afraid of Goliath. We don't know who percent out to go travel Goliath because Goliath was there mocking them. Big, tall, strong Goliath with his big sword and spear and big helmet, big body armor. So David says, Are oh, you afraid of that little guy? What is happening? Because he just came out at the lunch for his brothers. And he said, That man up there, Goliath, we can't manage him, you know, he will kill us down here. The cement. We will slaughter away. David said, I joke you, man. I will slaughter him for you. So they were all laughing and jeering, you know, you know, you know David, even his brother saying he should go home and take care of the, the sheep. Until he, he endured them. And they gave Solomon, Saul said, all right, let's see if you can kill him. Solomon gave him his arm and his spear and, you know, helmet and it was too heavy. David has to get out of that. But on him he had his little satchel full of stones. And, you know, he not left him, 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 him sling. He used a sling and stone him and they used. He stole the bear and the dragon and, and I mean, the bear and the lions and who attack him come to tear up the sheep in the of the pasture. Bam, David took on Goliath and slew Goliath. Once 29 minutes out and slew. He go by Goliath and chop off Goliath's head. And immediately David became known as the Lion of the tribe of Judah because everybody was singing because he defeated the Philistine. They ran away after Goliath's head was chopped off by, by this youth. You see me? Boom. That's how I get the name of Lion of the tribe of Judah because the ladies now in Jerusalem, they were singing, David killed 10,000 and Saul killed 1,000. So David now became the first lion of the tribe of Judah. Then till Solomon became the lion of the tribe of Judah as well. So we're looking at a title. Although Solomon now became the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. All right. So from the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, which was the second step of the title, from David to Solomon, it lasted... And that was a thousand years before, 900, year, 900 and odd years before Jesus Christ. It lasted from that time with the land of the tribe of Judah, plenty kings and emperors, because it went to Ethiopia through the son of Solomon via the queen of Sheba on her visit and the covenant of salt and Solomon tricked her and got a son called Menelik, you know? So Menelik now became the king of kings, lords of lords, conquering land of the tribe of Judah root of David, but you, if you should watch the word, land of the tribe of Judah, David. Solomon became land of the tribe of Judah, root of David. But it's still, the land of the tribe of Judah title is still traveling, coming from David into Menelik, and from Menelik in Ethiopia, it lasted until Haile Selassie, the last king of kings, lords of lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Haile Selassie is the last one. You don't have another one sit upon the throne. So from our interpretation in the Bible, it says, and he that prevailed to lose the seven seals, it says, he that sat upon the throne of the book in his hands, sealed with the seven seals on the front and on the back. And there was no man on earth or in the earth or under the earth found worthy to open this book. And he wept much. 
but we listen carefully. But one of the elders says, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the seven seals. What did he say? He says, The lion of the tribe of Judah, who is David from up there, he was the first lion of the tribe of Judah, has prevailed. That means from them times it prevailed to about 2,970 years. So long it stays in history, it stays in time, being triumphant, coming till Haile Selassie. And Haile Selassie is the one who.